Hi there. This is um, the second of the Year 12 films about metals, and it tries to describe or explain why the trends that we observe as we move around the periodic table looking at the metals, why they are the way they are. And hopefully by the end of this film you'll be able to describe, explain I should say, why it is that the melting points change in the way that they do. First of all moving across periods and secondly moving across groups. This really only, the really only, it's really the only physical property that you need to explain trends of as far as the metals are concerned. Okay, well what sort of things will it depend on? Well, let's just cast our minds back to the structure of a metal, this arrangement, this lattice of positive metal ions surrounded by this sea of delocalized electrons. Okay, these electrons that the ions have lost and are now able to move around. Okay, if you think about it, the melting point is really a kind of a measure of how much energy needs to be put in to break these metal bonds. And that's going to depend on the size of the ions. Why should it depend on that? Because it's the nucleus of these ions that is attracting these electrons. So the bigger this ion is, the more distance there will be between the nucleus and the electron. So the higher size ions should have weaker attractions for the electrons, assuming the charge is constant course. And the other factor that might affect how strongly these electrons are held to the ions, or in other words how strong this glue is at holding all these ions together, is the charge of those ions. The charge of the ions will affect not only how much positive charge there is attracting the electrons, so presumably as that increases, the strength of that attraction will increase, but it will also increase the number of electrons in there. So an Al3, for example, or if we look at aluminium, an Al3 plus ion has lost three electrons, whereas magnesium 2 plus ion has only lost two. So we'd expect more electrons in that C for aluminium than we would for magnesium. So they're the factors we're going to be considering as we move on. And we'll start by looking at trends within a period. So this slide shows us um, two atoms, both from the third period. This is by far the most common period to compare in the periodic table because it's it's quite small, it doesn't have too many quirks. Um, we're comparing next door neighbours in groups one and two, sodium and magnesium. So, um, what happens to the two factors that we talked about, which remember were size and charge? Now, both these two atoms have three shells, so they're going to be approximately the same size. Okay, we know from our atomic radius work that because the core charge of magnesium is higher, um, that those electron shells are pulled in slightly more towards the magnesium atom's nucleus. So this would be slightly smaller, but on the whole they're about the same size. So size is approximately equal as you move across a period, because the number of shells isn't changing. However, in the lattice, all the sodium atoms will lose electrons and become sodium ions, Na+. But magnesium atoms will lose two electrons and become magnesium 2+. So this lattice has more highly charged ions and more electrons in it, so we would expect the melting point as we move across a period from left to right, that is, to go up. Okay, so that's, in, that's across a period, the melting point. Now let's look at what happens as you go down a group. Down a group, the size will be changing, but the charge won't so much. Okay, so we're comparing now also neighbours in the periodic table, but these are both in group 1, sodium above potassium, sodium in period 3, potassium in, group, in period 4. Okay, so we've got three shells here, four shells there, so we'd expect the size to be increasing as we go down a group, whichever group of metals we happen to look at. Okay, but the charge within a group, that's not going to be changing. Okay, because sodium forms 1 plus ions and potassium forms 1 plus ions. Similarly in group 2 they all form 2 plus ions. Okay, So the size is changing, it's getting bigger, so the attraction is getting weaker. The charge isn't changing, so it's not going to affect the melting point. 
size is. So these attractions are getting weaker because of the increasing size and so the trend in melting point as you go down a group is that the melting point is gradually falling. Okay, so um, if, for example in um, group one where lithium is quite a hard metal, um, not particularly high melting point but um, higher melting point than sodium in the period below which melts at about what, just under 100 degrees, I think it is. And um, moving down the group even further, you move on to rubidium and cesium, which are actually liquids at room temperature. And potassium, although it's solid at room temperature, is so soft because of those weak attractions between the ions. Anyway, that's about it for metals, even if you're in year 12. That's, that's all really you need to know about the patterns between metals. Take care here, right? These are only patterns for metals. Okay, we'll see different patterns for melting point when we look at the non-metals.